Welcome to Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. Broaden the scope of exposure for your business by going beyond the interview. Learn more at www.jmbmediallc.com or email us at jmbradio at gmail.com. Today, we welcome an author of the upcoming anthology, Courage in Cannabis, Volume 2, envisioned by holistic health practitioner, Dr. Bridget Williams of Green Harvest Health. We look forward to sharing with you insights and experiences on this topic. Today, we welcome Danielle Simone Brand, who is a freelance writer and the author of Weed Mom, The Canna Curious Woman's Guide to Healthier Relaxation and Happier Parenting. Five years ago, she wouldn't have self-described as a weed mom, but she's found her sparkle in writing about cannabis to inform, uplift, and occasionally challenge her readers while helping push the conversation forward. She holds a BA from Dartmouth College and an MA from American University and has worked as a yoga teacher and trainer, a staff writer, and a researcher on issues of international conflict resolution. Her articles have appeared in notable publications such as the New York Times, The Week, Civilized, Vice, Double Blind, What's Up Moms, and Scary Mom. Welcome, Danielle. Thank you so much. Thrilled to be here with you. Yes, welcome. We're finally getting to meet you. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. It's been a bit of a, a runaround, but I really appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how did you get on this road? <laughs> <laughs> I do tell the story in my book because, you know, I wanted to bring readers on this sort of personal journey that I went through, um, which motivated me to write the book, basically. And I got there because I was a weed skeptic. I was a total cannabis skeptic, did not think that it had a lot of wellness, um, you know, or, or medicinal benefit necessarily, but I, I wasn't educated. I didn't know. And, you know, I, I also tell the story in my book about how for many years, I kind of saw my husband medicating with cannabis without a lot of awareness of how to medicate. Um, and and so, you know, I was a little judgmental about that, I'll be honest. So I came to it in a really roundabout way. I, I began, uh, I was a mother, you know, going about my life, trying to, you know, live and work and all that stuff and find myself again after having kids. And I was diving into freelance writing and ended up getting some assignments about cannabis before I even like cared anything about it. And so when I got those assignments, I learned and fell in love. You know, it's so interesting from a, you know, policy perspective, health and wellness. Um, you know, I came from a yoga background, so I'm definitely into self-care and spirituality. It bridges so many different areas, right? And so intellectually, I found it so interesting. I was interviewing moms and, you know, women and moms who were telling me how beneficial it was for their health and their well-being. And I was like, okay, maybe there's something to this. I'll give it a cautious little try. <laughs> <laughs> Very, you know, very cautiously, I ordered a vape pen, you know, delivery service, didn't want to walk into a dispenser or anything like that, got on my yoga mat, took a single puff, and then, I mean, I was such a newbie, such a cautious newbie, but, you know, I found such a beautiful experience where I felt deeply present, deeply in my body, and, you know, and, and well, and, you know, not anxious the way that I basically was in my everyday life all the time as a young mom trying to figure out the world, so, um, you know, that it was just, it, that was the beginning of my journey. And from there, I really dove in and learned more about cannabis and how, how helpful it is. Yeah. So moms definitely get a relief. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, it helped me with sleep first, which is so, so, you know, vital for our well being. Um, it helps me with anxiety, as I said, it helps me with pain. I have migraines, um, you know, and, and muscle aches and things like that. And cannabis also just, you know, it, it, it provides that little bit of perspective shift that helps me tune in better to my kids, that helps me, you know, go about my daily life in a, in a, in a more happy, peaceful way. And what's not to love about that? Yeah, true that. Everybody wants to look at the happy, happiness. Mm -hmm. Yes. So talk a little bit about cannabis with kids, partners, and friends. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, those are big topics and each of those is a chapter in my book because I think it's so important to have these conversations, you know, with peers, with friends, with cannabis skeptics in your life or with the curious folks too. Um, and certainly with kids because 
you know, the right now we're in this this moment of increasing legalization, increasing access, um, and yet there's still kind of a dearth of information um, out there. Still, people are, are operating on these really outdated stereotypes about cannabis, right? Mm -hmm. um, and kids, you know, I think that's that's an area where for a long time the Dare program lied to them about what cannabis is um, and its effects. Um, and so, you know, kids don't. I mean, they can pick up on BS, right? <laughs> yes, they can really quickly. <laughs> they really can. And and you know, if if we don't give trustworthy information, they're not going to trust us. Just you know, period. Yes, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And now that the cat's out the bag it's it's no turning back yeah there's no turning back and so we just need to educate you know i don't believe in giving kids access unless there's a medical reason of course but you know you can still normalize something just the way like you know i, I the alcohol cannabis comparison only goes so far but you know to compare it to alcohol we have alcohol many people have alcohol in their homes and they can educate their kids responsibly about you know what that it's an adult beverage right <laughs> um and then and, and its effects now cannabis has many medicinal effects that alcohol does not have um but it's still not really for young brains unless again there's a medical um, you know, a medical need for it. So I'm all about educating about responsible use, educating about the real benefits and the real risks of cannabis with kids. Otherwise, you know, they're going to find out for themselves. And I'd rather, I'd rather, you know, provide good information. Absolutely. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about the harms of the cannabis prohib prohibition. Uh, I can't even get it out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's yes. <laughs> so why is it important that it gets legalized in terms of social justice? Well, I, I mean, that is a huge subject and also a very important one. You know, the drug war has been disproportionately carried out against people of color in the United States. So that's a fact. And, you know, it's it's 100 percent true that changing the uh, the attitude, the laws and the attitudes around the drug war can open up the way for more equity now. Is the cannabis industry moving towards greater equity? That I don't know yet. We, uh, you know, I'm, I'm advocating for that. Lots of folks are out here advocating for that. And, you know, it's it, it, it's a tough it's a tough industry. So what I want to see is women owned businesses, um, people of color owned businesses, smaller entrepreneurs making it in this space and being able to create generational wealth after the devastation of the war on drugs. Um, I think it's incumbent on cannabis users today to choose, you know, socially conscious cannabis, to choose, um, you know, smaller craft craft cultivators, craft farms. Um, so, you know, we we can help right some of those wrongs from the war on drugs with the choices we make now. Yes, absolutely. Ruth, you have anything you want to add? We can't hear you. <laughs> No, I'm enjoying listening. Very fine. A very interesting conversation. Yes, it is. And it's important. So another question that, oh, how can people get the book? How can women get the book? Yeah, um, so they can order it on Amazon. They can also go to their local bookstore and ask them to order a copy. I love that because it supports local bookstores and it also, um, you know, potentially the bookstore would bring in another couple of copies for their readers. So that's always a great way, but, you know, online is, is easy for a lot of folks too. Yes, yes, it is. So since your book has been out, have you gotten any feedback from moms that have read your book? Yeah. Oh, yeah, lots of feedback. Instagram is is the place where I interact the most with my readers. And, you know, lots of moms have told me, you know, I, I overcame my shame about medicating with cannabis, or I was able to finally talk to, you know, somebody important in my life, my parent, my spouse, my child, you know, whatever, whoever it is, because they felt more confident after reading the book. Um, and that's, I love hearing that. That's what mm. I wrote it for really is to let moms know, like, Cannabis is a wellness tool if you use it correctly, right? If you, you know, use it intentionally, mindfully, right? You know, again, right product, right dose, right moment for you, it can be a tremendous boost. So, you know, and I hear that all the time. I hear women saying, you know, oh yeah, I, I, I get it now. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you've got plenty of moms that probably jump right on after you, after you wrote the book, because, <laughs> you know, dealing with children whether it's one or more, mm -hmm. it can be very challenging. Yep. 
It really can be. And, you know, our, our, our pace of life is so fast, so frenetic, so, you know, productivity focused, and it doesn't let us always slow down to the pace of children, you know, and we can't be that, that pace all the time, every day, obviously, but if we really want to connect with the child, you have to kind of slow down and be at their pace. And actually a little bit of cannabis helps me tune in better. It helps me listen to their long stories. And, you know, when they were younger, play, you know, make-believe. My kids are a little older and 10 and 13 now, so they don't necessarily play make-believe anymore. But when they did, it really helped me, you know, get get more in their pace and their level. And, and that's a gift. Yes. I could see where that would be really helpful. Yes, because children, their brain waves are slower, I believe. Or the, the way that they take in things, they're just at a different level. Sometimes we have to come down to their level and we try to do it intellectually, but they're not getting the intellectual part at all. <laughs> they need us to come down to their level yeah. for periods of time. So that could be most helpful. And uh -huh. to slow down, you know, to just stop doing, a, you know, 10 things at once. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And to be present is really difficult just to be present. You know, even with another adult, it's difficult to be present because our, we're busy. There's part of us that's there. The other part of us is planning and thinking and rearranging yep. and creating and all kinds of other stuff. So anything that can get us to slow down, like you said, and just be present in the moment is pretty powerful in this day and age when we're told that we're supposed to be multitaskers and wonder women and all the rest of those things that are impossible. <laughs> that's yeah. for sure after that's for sure and then you know really multitasking we think we're multitasking but we only do one thing at a time <laughs> we're just yeah, we're just making it more noisy in there and harder to get the one thing done <laughs> yes yes wow so do you have any like workshops or coaching programs for exactly. women um, so, I, so I don't personally coach. I I write and I advocate and I speak. Um, I do a lot of you know podcasts and news and things like that. Um, but I am actually leading a tour to Colombia coming up at the end of this month. A cannabis tour. We're going to be going to grows, commercial grows, sampling, getting like a you know big cannabis education experience. We're going to be sampling coffee as well because coffee grows in Colombia very well, as we know. Um, and just local cuisine, yoga, beautiful environment. It's just going to be really fun. Oh, that sounds really exciting. So when is that happening? That is happening at the end of, of April, April uh, 30th through May 5th. And it's open to women and moms and couples. Right. And if people want to be involved, how do they connect to that? I know it's a little short notice. I know it's really short, um, but they can find um, info on my Instagram at Danielle Simone Brand and also my partner's, um, uh, the, my business partner, Wind Hill Tours. Um, it's just just how it sounds. Wind Hill Tours, either dot com or on Instagram. And yeah, we're, we're, we're working on that tour right now, selling that tour because it's just going to be a magical experience for moms mm -hmm. and a five day getaway that I hope, I hope more women can, can take part in. Yeah, it sounds like it. And maybe you can come back and tell us all about it. <laughs> I, <laughs> oh, I'd love to. Yeah. It's just the, like one of the greenest places on earth, just, you know, hills with endless green tropical fruits, um, just, you know, amazing animals and uh, yeah, just really looking forward to it. Yes. Yes. Wow. So again, how can people get the book and how can they stay connected to you? Yeah. So the best places to reach me are either through my website or Instagram. My website is just my name, DanielleSimoneBrand.com. Um, same on Instagram at, at Danielle Simone Brand. And the book can be either purchased on Amazon or like BarnesandNoble.com, any place you buy books online, or you could just walk into your local bookstore and say, hey, Grab a copy of Weed Mom. Um, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I, I like the title. It sounds fun. You mm -hmm. know, and anybody that's looking to learn and a mom, and there's plenty of them, <laughs> the title itself is going to be, get me, get me. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, I wanted it to be fun and accessible at the same time as I'm sharing information. You know, I am a journalist. So I'm, I'm, I'm sharing studies. I'm sharing interviews with experts, interviews with everyday Canada moms, also telling my own, own story. But, you know, I want it to be fun. I want it to, you know, to be something people would pick up and like enjoy reading. So Absolutely. there's plenty of swearing in there. <laughs> yes. Well, we are so happy to finally meet you and definitely learn more about your your journey with cannabis and definitely looking forward to having you back to talk about this Columbus Columbia trip because it you. sounds amazing yes I'd, I'd love to thank you so much absolutely so what's your motivation about the book Perfect. You know, so because I went on my own cannabis journey of discovery and realized what a helpful tool it was, and then I found myself writing more and more about cannabis for, you know, various publications, both cannabis publications and mainstream ones, um, people in my community, especially other moms and my friends started coming to me and asking questions like, can you go to the dispensary with me? How, you know, how do you treat anxiety with cannabis? Like, what, you know, how do you choose the, the, the most environmentally friendly? Like all sorts of questions. So um, that I saw that there was a need for this information specifically geared toward women and moms, because for a long time, you know, the cannabis, the sort of underground cannabis industry seemed to be very much marketed toward guys, right? <laughs> and um, we're seeing that change now. We're seeing more women consumers, you know, come online. We're seeing more women consumers, you know, be open about their consumption. But, you know, for a long time, it was just sort of a, you know, a, a guy's game, it seemed. And so I just wanted to, to educate women and moms um, from this perspective of wholeness, wellness, you know, being our best for ourselves and our families. And what about your motivation for carriage and cannabis? Oh. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I just, I, I love sharing, first of all, I love being a part of a group that's passionate and into advocacy and, you know, Dr. Bridget is just such a, just such a light in this industry, I think, and a leader. So, you know, when she asked me to be a part of it, I was like, yes, no brainer. I want to be part of that community. Um, you know, and, and just generally speaking, I think sharing our stories is what's going to help change the narrative, sharing more of these, you know, everyday people help you know people who are who are um, from all different kinds of walks of life but using cannabis to help them be better be well um, I think that's going to help change the image in the long term absolutely absolutely 